So what we hope to do in this video today is rack our wine, which means transfer it from one container to another, in this case from the primary fermenter into a glass carboy. And we will determine whether we're going to be able to do that today by first checking the specific gravity of the wine. So let's open it up here and see what we can see. Definitely smelling a little better. And if we refer to the instruction sheet, secondary fermentation, the specific gravity should be about 1.010. So let's grab our hydrometer and check it out. We need our sterilant, of course. We've got our hydrometer handy here. And then again, I'm just going to use this method and drop it into the primer. Look at this. Our temperature is at 19 degrees Celsius, which is perfect fermentation temperature. I don't like it to be too warm. And the hydrometer is in here now. And if I take a look at it, we are sitting right around 1.00 which means we're virtually fermented out. So there's your hydrometer. Oops, slippery little guy. And you can see how it's floating a lot lower into the wine. And it is at about 1.00 on the specific gravity scale. Okay. To help clarify, let's take a look at our diagram again. And we started at 1.050 on the first day. Seven days later, we're floating down at 1.000. Simple. Okay, so we're ready to go. Let's grab our hydrometer out and clean it up. I'd like to clean everything right away. Good, put it away. I'm going to be using a couple different tools today. The first thing will be our carboy. Let me grab one for you. Here's a great tip for you. When you're not using your carboy, mix up a batch of sparkle bright according to the instructions on the container. And just, you know, put them to about a, a quarter of the way up and it will clean out your carboy on its own while you're not using it. All right, so let's dump out our sparkle bright. Put the sink here. Okay, so there it's all empty. Now we're just going to give it a rinse, and I do that with a what we call a bottle washer. I actually have a second set of taps built into this sink, and my bottle washer is always on there. It's basically a valve that when you push a bottle onto it, it gives you a big spray of water. It's very nice for cleaning your bottles as well as your cardboard. If you don't have a second set of taps on your sink, which you probably don't, you just have to take it on and off of your main set of taps. So the next thing we have to do is sterilize our carboy. Again, we're using our handy cover work container. Okay, so here we have our racking assembly. Essentially, a food quality plastic hose, as well as a J-tube and an anti-sediment tip. Okay, so we're gonna get uh, our carboy sterilized. I have my sterilant up on the countertop, carboy down below, so it's really easy to get a good siphon going quickly. So just work it around. You wanna have the sterilant touch all areas of the carboy. And the great thing is now you're also sterilizing your racking hose by using this method. Okay, so there it is. Now let's tuck this back inside. We've 
sterilize the inside of the hose. Now when we pour our sterilant back into our four liter container, we're going to be sanitizing and sterilizing the outside of the racking hose. And again, I reused all of the sterilant back into the container. Quick rinse. Carboys ready to go. The racking tube, we're going to give it a little bit more sterile just on top because I didn't pour that on anywhere. And a quick rinse. Again, we're using our bottle washer. Just pushes the water through and the sterile through. And then we'll use the wand here just to rinse the outside off quickly. Okay, we're ready. Okay, so the anti-sediment tip is going to go right to the bottom of the uh, of the primary fermenter. At the bottom of the primary fermenter is the lease, okay, or it's the dead yeast cells. And what the anti-sediment tip does is it will inhibit that lease from being racked over into the carboy. So we just set it right down into the bottom. And again, primary fermenters up high, carboy down low. Let's do our easy siphon. Okay, so as we're, we're racking this over, siphoning the wine over the carboy, I have the tube going all the way down to the bottom against the side of the carboy. We don't want to aerate the wine too much. We want to keep it as still as possible. So while, while the wine is racking from the primary into the carboy, let's do, take the time to do a little bit of paperwork. Uh, record the date that you're doing this racking, the specific gravity as well as the temperature. So you can see our wine is getting fairly low in the primary fermenter and the, the racking wand is going towards the back end. To make sure that we get all of the wine, we're just going to prop up our primary. I, I have to use a book and then it will ensure that we get all the wine from the primary into the carboy. Getting pretty close. Virtually everything is coming out of the primary. We're leaving the lease behind. Again, we want to leave the dead yeast cells behind in the primary. And you can see that we are done. So let's bring this up. These are heavy now. You can see that the level we have here is just, well, maybe a couple inches below the neck of the carboy. This is at a, a stage where some people would add water to top up or add another wine of similar style. I prefer not to top up at all. So now we're going to get a couple new tools I'll introduce you to. This is an airlock. And this is a rubber bump. We're going to go into the top of the carboy. CO2 will escape while it's continuing to ferment and it won't allow any contaminants getting into the wine. Before we put this into the carboy, we have to sterilize, of course. Got my sterling out here and got my measuring cup. I just chuck everything into it. So we got the sterile, and you'll notice, and I don't think we'll be able to get this on the video, but you'll notice that there's an etched line on the airlock. What I do is I fill up to that etched line with the sterile, and that does really ensure that nothing can get into the wine. Fruit flies, things of that nature. Put the cap on, put the bum, we give it a quick rinse. So here's a shot of an airlock close up and you can see that it's burping. 
And what it's doing is releasing the CO2 and again not allowing any contaminants getting into the wine. And it'll burp like this probably for about another 7 to 10 days. Okay, so we got a nice hot rag. I'm just going to wipe down the carboy. This is a step I really like to do because you can see your wine clear during the next couple of weeks that it's going to be living in this carboy. Okay, so there we have a nice clean carboy. This is actually quite an important stage for your wine. It's where fermentation continues and finishes, as well as the sediments will start dropping down to the bottom. So I always recommend that you put this in a place where it's not going to be disturbed, that you can quickly slide it in and out from an area so you can rack it another time without causing the sediment to come back into the wine. Okay, so other than cleaning up, we'll just pop our carboy back. You'll notice that we haven't used any additives at this stage. We're again just letting it ferment out. And there you have it. All we gotta do is clean up and we're done for the day. About 15 minutes and that's day two of winemaking.